Slurp de diddly do, my Gs. I hope you've all had a super nice week so far, nice and productive. And today we are going to do a little tip on ghost kicks because I love to use ghost kicks in my productions. I use them in almost every song, I think, in one uh, section or another um, because they are a great way you can quickly add a bit of extra groove and funk into your drums uh, using the same kick sample. And it's just very easy to do, but there are, some people uh, still do it wrong. And there's a, well, there's no perfect right or wrong way to do it. But the whole concept of a ghost kick is that it is a ghost version of the main kick. And it's just sometimes I've seen people have the, the ghost kick is as powerful as the main one. And that kind of defeats the point. So my favorite way to make a ghost kick is uh, basically just involves three or four very, very simple things that I'm going to do in the processing from the normal kick to, to trans to trans uh, transform it into a ghost kick. Yeah. And then I'll address the side chain issue as well in this video. So uh, the first thing, let's uh, let's take a listen to this, this kind of loop I've got. Uh, I've got a little bass line in here, a normal kick, some tops and a snare. <laughs> one of my um, phase plant presets in there called the Dam Buster. It's an old school one. Thanks to everyone, by the way, who bought uh, a bunch of phase plant um, preset packs recently. Uh, I'm much, yeah, you're much appreciated. Um, but basically, where do we add the ghost kick in is obviously important. Okay, so um, we're going to add it in. We're going to find a spot. And we can leave we can leave everything as it kind of is normally. We basically just copy down the kick um, sample onto a new channel, so we have two. And let's say I want to have it there. You know, I like that spot. Yeah, but um, so I, but I need to process it. So once I found a cool spot for the ghost kick where it's nice and funky, uh, I need to. I can't just use the exact same kick sample. I've got to process it. So here are basically the ways, the three things that I do, the three or four things. And the first thing is um, is basically just to weaken the highs and the lows. So I found that you know high cutting and low cutting was a bit too extreme in the past. So all I do now is I do a nice little shelf. I shelf down the lows. So kind of just weakening the lows, then I shelf down the highs. So just weakening uh, both, yeah, the, the power in the low end and, and dampening the kick in the highs. So it's just becoming like, yeah, definitely weaker than the main one already. And um, then what I love to do is add on some tape. And here you can change the character. Um, yeah, you can like, you can use any tape plugin, run through presets and just have a listen and you'll degrade the sound slightly, you'll change the character slightly um, and then just listen in the context of your mix. But um, yeah, really, really cool way you can quickly degrade the sound, give it a bit of character and some new harmonics to make it slightly different from the main kick, you know? All right, so this one's got a bit of noise on there. I can um, I can bring that down a little bit just for now. Um, it still uh, does a lot of other stuff to the sound, which changes it, which is great. Uh, then the the last thing basically is to turn it down. But we can uh, we can also um, we'll start we'll turn it down first because it definitely needs to be quieter than the main one. And this is where we can sort of listen in our mix already with everything else. Okay, and also. For a little bonus, you can also compress it a bit because remember this is like the weaker kick, like it's not the main one. If it was the main one, I wouldn't want to compress it. But because it's the weak sound, it's a good idea to compress the weak, the weaker sounds, you know. So um, we can just apply a little bit of compression. There you go, F further weakening the sound. And then, then you've got a great... Um, yeah, you've got a great dynamic kind of setup now, you know, you're paying attention to the dynamics always. And one last thing that I've done here, which you can do as well for a ghost kick if you want to, is you can pitch it differently. So for this one, I've pitched it up three semitones and you could use a pitch shifting plugin if you want or or on Ableton, maybe the algorithm is a bit better, but on Logic, it, it'll get a better quality 
um, when you just put the kick into a sampler, pitch it up, and then bounce it back out. So I've pitched it up three semitones, and then, yeah, bounced it back out to this green one. And so now I've got like two uh, kick, two ghost kicks. And yeah, because it's a low kick, like it's hard to hear the real difference, but you can uh, definitely feel that there's some variation now that the second one is three semitones higher. You could go higher than that. You could go up to seven semitones or whatever if you wanted to, but um, that's just like a bonus thing. You don't have to pitch it differently. I just wanted to include that as a little creative idea. But yeah, that's basically then the ghost kick. And the final thing to talk about is obviously uh, people often ask like, do I side chain the ghost kick or how do I side chain the ghost kick? And um, yeah, you, you could do it if you want to, but personally, I've never side chained my ghost kick in my tracks to like the bass or something, because for me, the real important um, mix down that where everything is kind of like has to be perfect is like my main kick, my main snare, and like my bass. I do loads of side chaining between those three to get the, to set the foundation for the mix down. Um, but the ghost kick, because it's become weaker and it's more of a middle ground sound now, uh, it doesn't it doesn't have so much importance with regards to um, the yeah the whole like low end groove that's going on. Like it it adds it do, don't get me wrong it adds groove, but um, I like to. I like to really give the the main kick drum the priority in in the sense that that's the one that the mix down is focused around, you know. So I don't focus all of the low end um, mix down uh, around the ghost kick. I see it more as like this thing in the middle, like a little tom hit or something like that. That um, it can sit there and it doesn't really get in the way because I've weakened it enough, you know. So I'll just basically I'll just leave it how it is. I won't side chain it and. Um, I'll just get that balance myself with the volume and taking out some low end so that it kind of fits into the mix without needing to be side chained. Essentially, that's how I play it, you know? And so here it sounds great. Uh, you know, I haven't had to do any work and it already, um, you know, I've side chained the, the main bass to my kick drum, to, to my main kick, you know? But the, but the ghost, I'm not doing that. I'm just gonna, just adjusting the volume and doing uh, adjusting the compressor. And again, like adjusting the, the high and low shelf. Maybe go even a little bit more with the compressor. Yeah, I could even, I might even take out a little bit more high end as well. So that, that to me there sounds great. I can hear the ghost kick uh, along with the bass. They're not really interfering because I've weakened it enough. And so that's how I personally um, uh, create my ghost kicks and then mix them in. So job done, nice and easy. Thank you very much for watching my Gs. I hope you all have a great weekend ahead of you. If you're new to the channel, uh, leave us a comment down below. Say, tell us where you're from, what your name is, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream and uh, make sure you subscribe as well. And uh, yeah, also there's links down below if you guys want one-on-one -on -one coaching. I do that uh, Monday through Saturday. And uh, in between my coaching sessions and in between my YouTube videos, we've got an active Discord community of members and we're talking in there pretty much every day uh, about lots of different things, but uh, mostly music production. And we have um, yeah feedbacks uh, between uh, members and I'm, I'm in the chat as well often. And we also have a feedback live stream coming up next Friday, which is there's still time to be a part of, but you'd need to be in the Discord if you'd want to be in that. Anyway, you can still watch the stream next Friday on YouTube. And thank you very much, my G's. Have a great weekend. Peace out. Much love.